Oh shit, it's time to go ride, dude. It's time to go ride, dude. Thank you. What is up dudes, Chooch back with another video and today we're out here ripping on some brand new terrain and it is like muddy conditions out here guys. We got a little bit of rain actually, it usually snows this time of year but it was actually a little bit warm, we got a little bit of like a misting in the afternoon and you know it was a little bit muddy out here and what ended up happening actually is I was riding so much mud guys that it got caked all up in like the top of the unicycle and it was just so much extra weight added in there you know this was just this thick heavy mud and usually you know if it's the right consistency of mud i can pick the wheel up you know drop it a few times and kind of knock the mud out of it but this mud just caked in there and it was making it ride weird like coming down this whole hill right here like just having that extra uh mud just caked in there and it was actually gripping the tire you can see right there the middle of the tread where it's just you can see where it's completely black on that middle part of the tread and that's because every time that tire is circling around it's just rubbing the top of it in there you know but anyways guys it was a really fun day i found some really cool trails I went out here just you know just cruised around and just was looking for new stuff to ride man i was just like man i gotta get out and find some from some new stuff um, that I never rode before and I went up here to this town in Colorado called Lyons and it's basically the the start off for Rocky Mountain National Park so if you're ever going to Rocky Mountain National Park you'll probably go through Lyons before you head up there and it's a really really cool uh, it's a really cool town honestly I wouldn't mind living there it's a really quaint uh, quiet town uh, you know there's not really too much going on there honestly so I just rode around up here, you know, and was really exploring it. Usually what I'll do is I'll really look at Google Maps, you know, and try to find exactly where I want to go. But other times I'll just ride around, you know, and try to find a trail or a cool spot or see, you know, something that, you know, looks neat and head over there and check it out. And that's what I did here, you know, I was just cruising around and, you know, there's definitely some some trails and stuff around here. I knew that, but I just wanted to go ride around, check it out, you know, see what's up. And it definitely turned out to be a great day. I had an absolute blast, and I ended up finding a cool skateboard park with a, a, a sweet little jump. I'm going to include that in the next video. This ended up just getting to be too long of a video. I got a lot of footage, so that's that's good. And I really, you know, really enjoyed the the multitude of terrain. I rode everything from uh, off road tracks. I rode sand. I rode icy trails. I rode some snow. I rode. Uh, on road and i rode a i found a high school track to go ride around too so that was pretty good but you could really tell how much mud was just caked in this thing man this thing is just it, it was riding so weird having all that mud in there and, and it, it's over there right now just caked with mud like just completely caked up with it i'm gonna have to really get a like a pressure washer in there tomorrow to get all this mud out of this thing if i didn't have these spiked foot plates there's no way i could have done this ride but you know like this the spiked foot plates i got this merlin fish foot plates on here and just any type of spiked foot plates is going to be a game changer guys for uh, riding in mud or riding in snow or in any wet conditions or anything like that because that i mean the grip tape works but over time you know the grip tape just gets worn out and you can really get more control over it now, I, I am absolutely blown away with how much more control i have over the wheel with having spiked foot plates on there you know it's it's absolutely incredible so if you haven't picked up some spiked foot plates you know um and you do all, any type of off-roading with mud or snow or anything like that or rain you know i definitely suggest finding some uh, Mer i'll put merlin fish's contact info down below i don't have like an affiliate link or anything like that and i'm not even sure if he, he if he's really making a lot of them but um if you want to contact him you definitely can and i know Gotway's making some and a, a lot of a lot of other people are making some as well like the nile nile love and, or however you say it but uh yeah Spike foot plates are definitely the way to go for for mud, <laughs> because I'd have been slipping off of this thing, man. I, I, once it, you once you get a, a whole layer of that mud on there over that grip tape, it's just 
it really hinders your ability to ride this thing. So this trail kind of goes behind the mountain range um, following Highway 36 up towards from, if you're going from Denver up towards, you know, Wyoming or, you know, Cheyenne, Wyoming or anything like that. This is really, I was probably only 35, actually I'd say about 40 minutes from the Wyoming border right here. So I'm getting pretty, pretty close to Northern Colorado um, with, with where I'm riding at right here. And, you know, this whole trail right here, I thought that I could I could safely ride down 36 from the opposite way, but I ended up connecting to this trail from a completely different different way, and then I got over here to this side, and the trail ended up being completely closed. So I wasn't able to do the whole thing that I wanted to, and it's a long trail. So if I did that entire trail, which I'll go back and do it on a good day, that trail it gets gnarly up at the top like once you pass like i read online once you pass there's a silo up there after climbing that mountain because you climb way up that little valley that you just saw and you pass a silo and they say once you pass the silo it basically turns from beginner mountain bike trails to just full-on like double black stuff and i've seen the youtube videos of it and it is pretty gnarly it is just rock gardens and rock gardens and and a lot of the stuff, you know, I might have to walk the unicycle over, uh, but I think I'll be able to go back and, and hit most of it for sure. You just see how much mud is just caked in this thing, guys. It was, it was gnarly up there. It was a fun day, though. It's weird. It has so much mud in it right now. I'm going to get down on those muddy trails, man. So much fun, too. So y'all are probably wondering, like, what in the world you got on the front of this thing, man? Like, what are the extra wheels on the front of the on the front of the unicycle? And that's something I came up with. So those are actually the training wheels that they used to give you for the old Airwheel X3s back in the day, the original, the original, original electric unicycles. Whenever they were selling them on Amazon, actually, those are the uh, little training wheels they came with. But I had those left over, and I was getting creative with it, and the whole ratchet strap thing. So the reason I'm putting the ratchet strap around the wheels and on, on my other wheel is because what I found is with these side pads on here is basically I need to disperse the force from lifting up on these things and braking and everything like that. And all of that force is literally just being placed on those screws on the side panels. And so what I did is I, I was thinking of a way that I could disperse all that, you know, all that force around the wheel and not have it directly pending on those screws that are screwed into the side of the unicycle. And so what I did is I ordered this strap, this just ratchet strap, and I'll link it if you all want me to. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, and it's literally the perfect size. It goes right around the top. You can just, you know, tighten it down. You don't need to tighten it much. Just tighten it like one, one little click to pull everything snugly together. And what that does is you can even tell a difference in, in the riding style of it. Um, it whenever there's not a 15 pounds of mud in it like there is right now, you can really tell a, a positive difference in the way that this whole thing is working with the side pads. Basically, you can, you can feel that your whole force from the side pads, from your lean, from your braking, and from your jumping is dispersed around the entire top of the wheel. So the side pads, all that force is really, you know, coming over the entirety of the wheel instead of just going directly into the screws on the side panels. And, I mean, it, it does work. You know, it's pulled. No way! I just woke up. Sick! Sick! What the fuck? I just literally just stumbled across this. No way! No way! Yo! <laughs> this is tight. I gotta try the jump stop before I rip them. See what they're like. This one's pretty nice. That one's hittable for sure. Pulling together everything, you know, and pulling all that stuff tauntly together, and it's not not relying on one point of contact for all that force. And the ride is way better. Like, I, it was a simple thing I was thinking of, and I literally went on Amazon to find this specific thing, a ratchet strap with no hooks on it, to do that. And then I did it, and it worked out great. Now look at this, dude. This is this needs to work, but that's it, dude. Ooh. 
has shot you, dude. Sick, man. Sick find today, bro. Sick find on the ride. Hell of an awesome spot, man. Man, I found the absolute coolest thing in the world to do, man. I'm so glad you guys watch this stuff and enjoy it. Because I love making it. And it has changed my life so much, man. I'm not kidding you. And the fact that I have something to do now. To literally wake up. When it, I'm never bored, man. I always have something to do. I always have a new spot to find. I Literally, this hobby has saved my life, man. I'm not kidding you when I say that. It saved my life. I love it. Man, and Merlin Fish, dude, I appreciate these pedals, dude. Look at this. I just hit those jumps with that much mud on my pedals. With my Merlin Fish foot plates, dude. They're freaking awesome, man. Thank you so much, man, for sending these to me. And what I did with the uh, wheels, I was thinking, you know, I already had this case around it. You know, I, I, I basically just, I have all that baby bumper padding around the wheel. And then I put the, uh, and then I had this like suitcase and I wasn't really going to use the suitcase anymore. So I dismantled that suitcase and then use that, you know, to make a covering for this whole thing. And the, the main reason I wanted a good cover on it, you see on the top right there, that top flap that's kind of over everything. That's the hard back of the suitcase, you know, the hard backing of it. And that's on top right there, and there's padding under that. So if I do, if, and it's happened before, that's the, the reason I did all this is because immediately when I got this wheel, I crashed it. You know, an 1800 watt hour wheel uh, for me is just a heavier wheel than what I'm used to. Uh, riding that 1300 watt hour M, M Super X, all my wheels in the past have been, you know, 1200, 1300 watt hour wheels. And this 1800 watt hour, guys, it's just like, it, it was just dumb situations where I would literally just over lean it or either like, like, I mean, I could ride it, but it was always just me thinking I had a lighter wheel under me where I would over lean or something stupid would happen or a pedal would dip and then I would overcorrect for it. Look at that, dude. I find I find the craziest stuff. You see that jump over there? And it's a little track, but it says no trespassing. Shit. And I I actually crashed the M Super Pro at like I was going like three miles an hour. And I crashed like pretty hard and I dinged the front of it up pretty good but it was just like it was just a, i mean it was stupid and so i was like dude i'm just gonna put some you know like padding on the front of this thing really do it up but then i was thinking with the uh those wheels man i was just like these will work perfect i could literally put these on the ratchet strap and then push them tauntly against like i got like an inch of padding on the front of this thing and so those wheels are pulled tauntly on it you know they're solid on there and the other thing is i'll show y'all in a video like i made a video of actually go oh, you know, breaking down on how the whole case works and everything i might post it i might not but the wheels work really really well as a stand now so i can literally just and it's a rolling stand so whenever i go to park this thing i literally just get off of it lean it forward and the pedals fold up perfectly because it's leaning all the way forward and then i can roll it around while it's off and it's like in in the stand position it's the coolest thing in the world like and also come the day where i really send it and crash you know even if it doesn't land like perfectly on both of them, you know, and say it even just skids and just hits one of them really hard on the front right there, it's going to disperse energy, you know, it's going to disperse energy well, um, better than it just directly impacting. Anything rolling is just going to disperse energy better than something impacting and stopping, you know, so that's the philosophy behind it. And if it, it pops off, you can put the ratchet strap right back on there. So that's what I was experimenting with. So if y'all looking at this being like, dude, has he lost his absolute mind? What has he done to his wheel? I just, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, of, of an idea and it actually worked out. So, yeah. So right now, this is a ride. I'm, I'm riding back from Longmont, Colorado, back over to the mountain range over here. And this is a long ride. I actually had to go out here to a Sam's Club. I, there's this, not a Sam's Club anywhere near where I live at. And so the closest one was way out here, and so I took a, a long ride on the uh, unicycle out there. And it ended up being, you know, it ended up having plenty of range to do it. I came back and lit, I had no problem getting way out here. So that was pretty cool. Actually, on the way over here, I, I ran into my buddy that was on the, um, he just got a brand new veteran Sherman. I was going to do some filming, but we ended up just talking uh, for a little bit. But definitely, I'll try to do some filming of, of him riding that new Sherman soon. Dude, I want to get some footage of you ripping it, man.
but believe it or not, that was the first time I've ever seen a veteran Sherman in person. You know, I, I don't know. I've just, I guess I've skipped the beat on, on getting one. And, you know, that wheel, guys, is the coolest damn thing I've ever seen in my life, guys. So, 100%, man, I really want to get that thing and review it and check it out. But if y'all are thinking about buying one and pulling the trigger on that veteran Sherman, definitely, guys. I'm giving you the chooch recommendation. Just seeing it hands-on and seeing somebody ride it, dude, that thing is awesome. It looks good. Man, it just, that thing just stands out, man. That The tire on that thing is gnarly. That knobby tire just rooster tails, all type of gravel everywhere, man. And it just, it sounds like a freaking big truck coming down the road, you know, that knobby tire. The headlight on it is awesome. It's just a really good looking wheel. It's not as big as I thought it was either, you know. It's just, it's, it, it's a stout little, like, high performance, sweet machine man that veteran sherman's a cool cool wheel so if y'all are thinking about getting one i'm sorry i haven't brought some content on it you know um the way i work with with it is i'm in college and this thing still gets me around and i have fun on it you know and i can't really afford getting that that veteran sherman right now i'd love to get it but this thing gets me around plenty plenty of distance and plenty of speed you know so i really can't justify buying one right now you know uh but i definitely if y'all are thinking about getting one and and y'all are considering you know uh, a wheel to get and you got the extra extra change to get it man that veteran sherman dude you will not you will not be disappointed getting that wheel i straight up tell you that that thing is holy cow man i i got home and i was just like i was scrolling through you know e wheels myself man i was just like drooling over i'm like dude i thought the better term was cool but i didn't think the thing was that cool like i didn't think it i didn't i didn't know it was that cool man once i actually saw it in person man i was i was thrilled so i'm, I'm glad to see a buddy that, that, that got it locally and you know ripping it and hopefully i can get some some footage of him riding it at least you know to show you all so the night before it was a full moon man and it was like looked like bright outside and then it was a new moon and it was just completely dark outside this night and man I, it was riding home i was riding home in pitch black the whole way home pretty much